The purpose of the game will be to drop your balls in such a way that they land in good slots and not bad slots. We have bounces in place already, but we need to fill the gaps between them with something so the player knows where to aim. We'll be filling the gaps with two types of target slots, good ones coloured green and bad ones coloured red. As with bouncers, we'll have to place a few of these things, which means we'll make a new method to do this. This needs to load the slot base graphic, position it where we asked for, then add it to the scene. So let's add that now. We'll say func make slot at position cg point is good bool. Var slot base is an sk sprite node. Uh, if this is a good slot, then slot base will be made to be an sk sprite node using image named slot base good from our asset catalog. If it's a bad slot, we're going to say slot base is equal to an sk sprite node using image named slot base bad. Then place it appropriately, doing slot base dot position equals the position, and then add child slot base. So add it to the game scene. Unlike make bounce at, this method has a second parameter, whether the slot is good or not, and that affects which image gets loaded. But first, we need to call the new method. So let's go ahead and add some new lines to make did move to just below these calls to make bouncer at. So we'll say uh, make slot at the CG point uh, will be x128, y0 is good, true. And I'll copy and paste that a few times. So we have four of these calls. We've got x128, we'll do x384, then x640, and then x896, all with y0. And we'll have is good true, is good false, is good true, and then is good false. So we end up with four of these slots spaced between the five bounces. So the bounce of number one is zero, bounce number two is two, five, six, halfway is one, two, eight, and that's where our first slot's going to be. It's worth running the program just quickly, just to make sure it's all looking correct. So you can see a good slot, bad slot, good slot, and bad slot. Now, one of the obvious but nice things about using methods to create the bounces and slots is that we want to change this way the slots look, we have to change it in one place. For example, we can make the slot colors look more obvious by adding a glow behind them. So here we have our make slot method again. We have var slot base. I'll add next to that var slot glow is an SK sprite node. So if it's a good slot, we make slot base good, which is awesome. Uh, we'll also have slot glow be equal to SK sprite node image named this one's called slot glow good and for bad if it's bad we'll put slot glow to be equal to slot glow bad both are placed at the same position to do slot base position is position and slot glow dot position is position and then add uh, both things here so slot base and child slot glow so it basically doubles every line of code changing base to glow well, as a result, what will happen is we have the base, the little red and green lines, behind it will be this glow picture as well. So it's more apparent now which ones are good and which ones are bad. We can even make the slot spin slowly by adding a new class called SK Action. So we have SK Sprite node here to do rendering of sprites in the screen. SK Actions are ways to add interesting functionality to sprites and other nodes. For example, making them fade in or out or move around the screen. They are ridiculously powerful and we're gonna do some great things with them later on. But for now, we just want the glow to rotate very gently. Before we look at the code bit has happened, you need to learn a few things up front. First, angles are specified in radians, not degrees. This is true in UIKit 2, to be fair. So 360 degrees, i.e. a full circle, is equal to the value of two times pi radians. That's the mathematical value of pi. So pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Second, rather than have you try to memorize it, there's a built-in value of pi called cgfloat.pi. Third, yes, cgfloat is just another way of doing decimal numbers like double and float. Swift also has double.pi and float.pi where you need different precisions. 
If you're curious, CG float exists because on some systems it's a double, on others it's a float. It's a way of saying we don't really care what size it is, just give me some sort of value, please. And fourth, when you create an action, it will execute once in SpriteKit. If you want to run it forever, you create another action calling repeat forever on that and use that instead. So our new code will rotate the glow node by 180 degrees, available as dot pi, over 10 seconds, repeating forever. So we're going to add here before the end of our method. Uh, here, we're going to say let spin equals sk action dot rotate uh, by angle dot pi. That'll be cg float dot pi over 10 seconds. Then let spin forever equals sk action dot repeat forever spin. Finally, slot glow dot run the action spin forever. So spin by pi degrees, so half a circle over 10 seconds, make it loop forever, then apply that to the glow straight away. If I press Command R, it'll build and run again, and this time we should see the glow spin around very, very gently. There we go. Nothing too fast at all. Like that. Beautiful. Simple effect, but it makes a big difference, I think.